Hi, welcome back. It's great to have you. I'm John Roffel and I'm going to talk a little bit just in the basics of when you change your guitar strings, okay? Um, and these are real basic things. I'm going to kick off with um, actually taking old strings off. I'm going to then be focusing in this video what you can do while the strings are off your guitar. I'm not a luthier. I don't make instruments, I don't repair instruments, I'm just um, really a novice player but I love musical instruments and I love guitars in particular and I'm hoping that this video will help you appreciate the workmanship and the craftsmanship that has gone into your guitar, okay? So here goes. Right, number one, taking off the old strings. I'm going to move this camera around so you can see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Here are, I've already taken the strings off my Alvarez. These are my old strings. You can see they're color coded, by the way. So when you put your new set of strings on, if they're color coded, they're very easy to make sure you don't put in the wrong place. These are the old strings I've cut off. And when you, put, when you take your old strings off the guitar, best thing to do is to first of all, make sure that you loosen off, slacken off your your strings don't have them tight because that will just put extra stress on the neck or it releases the stress all of a sudden so slacken them off just a little bit and then get a pair of snips i keep a pair of snips especially for doing this and i try to snip them pretty much near to the sound hole and the reason for that is that especially on a high-end guitar you don't want these loosened wires springing out and damaging the finish of your guitar. So that's just a wise thing to do. Then just take them out. Now, what can you do once your strings are off the guitar, which is the perfect time to uh, dress your fretboard, right? This is so important. The, the fretboard can't be properly dressed while you've got strings on it. So I suggest that this is the time that you check out your um, fretboard. And the best thing to dress it with is lemon oil. Okay, I'm using Diodario lemon oil. And the way I do it, I'm going to use this, just a regular duster first of all. And you just put a tiny amount of lemon oil on a duster or lint-free cloth and just rub it into the wood like this I'll show you what the effect is right and if you look hopefully you can see where I've rubbed it or come a little bit more shiny can't see it very well actually can you there you go now i've i've cheated a bit because i've already that's where i haven't done it yet you can see it's duller but if i put some polish on it you'll see it's rather lemon oil not polish on it you'll see it'll come up a bit brighter um if i had enough lemon oil on it bit more lemon oil hopefully you can see the distinction now when I do it again here we go right we're going to go up to the 12th fret here 11th fret 10th fret and hopefully you can see the difference past the 12th fret it's a bit duller knocking the headstock very gently there right you don't want to leave it there you want to do a good job and rub it well into the wood right into the edges of the frets right the way up the fretboard and when you've done that you can polish it and I'm going to use some kitchen towel for this 
So here's some kitchen towel. It's a regular kitchen towel. You might want to use a micro cloth for it, in fact. And then just gently rub it, polish it. Just you don't want to leave lots and lots of oil on the surface. But what I like to do, I like to take a couple of days to do this. So I don't want to do it all in one go. I don't rush restringing. I want to use lemon oil, let it soak a little bit, and then come back to it. Don't leave standing oil, rub it in, but make sure the fretboard is nicely um, nourished. And also, of course, don't forget the bridge. So the bridge must come into effect as well. I'll just show you the bridge here. So don't forget to put lemon oil on the bridge. Right. I'm going to come back to the bridge in a moment. But while we're on the subject of this side of it, check to make sure there's nothing rattling inside the sound hole. And how's, here's a perfect opportunity to check for any dust or whatever that's inside the guitar, you can remove it now that you can't remove other times. All right. Um, the other thing you can do is use sparingly guitar polish. This is guitar polish I'm using. But be warned, check the finish of your guitar. Because if you've got some kind of a nitrate finish on it, or an old finish, then you can't damage the guitar. My Hofner, which you may have seen in previous uh, videos, my Hofner from the 1960s has got a very delicate old-fashioned finish. And if you use a harsh polish on that, it will be damaged. And someone before I owned it actually did that. And some of the polish has been damaged. But I just put that down to being a well-used guitar in actually very good condition considering everything right so that's your warning don't just put polish on without checking i'm not going to be liable for anything that you do on this video that doesn't work out right let's go to the headstock for a moment and because while you've got the strings off it's a perfect time to check the machine heads um, on my alvarez uh, i bought this one actually in a charity shop or what you call a goodwill shop a number of years ago about six or seven years ago maybe longer and um actually the machine heads it's had two replacement machine heads at some point in its life either that or it's got the original machine heads and four of them are replacements i really don't know but now's a perfect opportunity to just check make sure you use the correct screwdriver that one's a bit small here's a bigger one just check to make sure that it's tight. Don't over tighten. Those are okay. Can't see, can you, because my hand's in the way. Just make sure they're not too loose. And you can also check the action of them. while off your guitar. Okay, with that taken care of, this guitar has been set up by Bob Barry, who's a fantastic luthier in Birmingham, England. If you want his details, contact me personally, I'll be happy to give them to you. And he set up this guitar absolutely beautifully, and at the same time, he put a pickup on it. Um, and so I'm not going to mess around with the saddle. Um, I'm going to leave this absolutely because this is how Bob set it up. Okay, so the saddle height obviously affects the height of the strings that can affect your playing. For me, um, I've done one saddle on another guitar that isn't such a costly guitar, but I'm not going to touch a guitar that is a prime guitar for me I will take it to a professional you might be more confident or more willing to experiment be my guest but I would recommend if you're not if you're new to this don't mess around with stuff but one thing you can change 
are the bridge pins. So these are the bridge pins. And these are the plastic ones. I suspect they came with the guitar. So I'm going to take the bridge pins out. One, two, three. Oops. It's gone for a burden. Four. Find it later. I'm holding the camera with one hand. Right, here we are. Five bridge pins should be six with the six ones full on the floor. There we go. Right, these are plastic. So what you can do, you can replace bridge pins with, uh, you can replace them with, with uh, Tusk, which is a brand name, which is very stable material, rather like bone. With bone, various types of bone, you can replace them with um, metal bridge pins, but you can also replace them with ebony bridge pins, which is wood. And I've chosen, now there are some videos, I'm going to try to put some links on them, either up here or down below to, some, to a very good video that has a great comparison of different bridge pins, how they will affect a guitar. Bridge pins do affect the tone of your guitar. They shouldn't affect the intonation of it or the tuning of it, but they will affect the tone of the guitar to a certain extent. The change is minimal, but it is noticeable. And so if you want to get the very best out of your guitar, you might want to consider changing the bridge pins because it's very inexpensive. So now I'm going to do a reveal. These bridge pins came earlier in the week and I've resisted opening the package until this very moment. So let's open up these ebony bridge pins. I've chosen ebony because my Alvarez, apart from the fact I use light gauge spring, st springs, light gauge strings, um, the Alvarez I've got here has got quite a bright tone to it. And I love the, uh, the tone that a Martin D28 gives, for instance, um, uh, especially on the bottom end. And so Ebony should try to balance out that tone just a slightly bit and bring out a little bit more of the the sweetness of the lower register of the guitar and just take the edge off the high end a little bit so we're going to try it out here so let's open up come on john you can do it here we are let's see what we've got inside shall we and here they are these bridge pins are Crosby Audio Pure Ebony Bridge Pins with Abalone Dot Inlay. Six pieces. Okay, let's see if they live up to their reputation. Now what I'll say is these are about £12.15 US dollars on the internet and it came very, very quickly. They've got a little seal on them here as you can see. So I'm going to break the seal and open them up. Um, the fitment of different pins depends on your guitar and websites don't always show the exact dimensions why won't this open there we go it's a slide box so here are the great reveal and there they are and they're First impression. Very nice. Very smooth. Let's compare them to the original. As I suspected, the replacements are slightly shorter. That's quite normal, actually, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I don't know why, but as long as it reaches down below the saddle that should not make a difference the key now is these are standard size fitment for most guitars so the question now is will they fit here goes let's see if they will fit or not and they do 
maybe a little bit proud. I might have to sand them down just a little bit. I will have to sand them down just slightly to fit. But there they are, there they're in place, you can see. I'm not that bothered about the way they look, but I do want to make sure they sound good. So there we are, there's the bridge pins. I'm going to disappoint you because on this video I'm not going to restring the guitar and play. I'm not going to do a comparison of the different bridge pins because there is such a fantastic video up there um, already. It's silly for me to try to replicate that. Crosby, these aren't the cheapest pins, but they're a brand name pin. And I also looked at the kind of responses we were getting from purchasers and these ones got a consistently high rating. So these are the ebony bridge pins and we'll be fitting them later when I restring the guitar after I've done things like polished the guitar, cleaned it thoroughly, completely finished dressing the fretboard um, this one has got beautifully smooth fret edges. Gets a little bit, tiny bit rough after the 12th fret. Um, but I'm not going to touch that. If it's good enough for Bob, Bob Barry, it's good enough for me. I'm not going to undo any of the work he's done on this guitar. Um, I've put a lot of money into this guitar comparatively over the years to make it the fine instrument that it is. I used to live in St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where Alvarez come from. In fact, a good friend of mine who's a worship leader in St. Louis, he used to do all the setups on the high-end Alvarez guitars coming in from Japan. And uh, this one, it confused me a little bit because, let's say about the guitar, it doesn't have label inside. I was a little concerned, I thought, I hope it's not a stolen guitar. So I got a hold of Alvarez, and Alvarez are very, very good on customer care. And they had sent loads of photos of the guitar to them. And they think that this guitar is actually a pre-production model that came out around the year 2000. It was about 20 years old. And that the pre-production batch had slight differences, which they noted to me of this particular model and that it wouldn't have had it would have had a non-standard label on it which someone's taken off and so they've assured me that they don't think there is anything other than a genuine proper guitar but it's got a little bit of history to it as well and under my ownership of course it's got even more history so there you are take care of your guitar because guitar is a precision instrument and made with loving care and when you look after it lovingly and carefully it will last you for many many years so i hope this has helped you it's a very basic video uh, but just enjoy playing and make a joyful noise unto the lord if you're new to guitar pick it up learn some chords you might also want to learn a little bit of keyboard at the same time because the musical notes that we are familiar with here in the West, they are also very easily transferable. In fact, they're based on the piano keyboard. And if you learn the piano keyboard, it'll be a lot easier to learn your way around the fretboard from the first fret to the 12th fret, which is a complete octave on your fretboard. So enjoy playing. Just strum, just play. Just worship Jesus. Don't worry about being how good you are or how bad you are. Make a joyful noise and make up songs prophetically to the Lord. Just rejoice in Him. If you can just do three chords, just use your three chords. You know, your C, your G and your B and just enjoy playing that. And if you get fed up with that, put a capo on and you can change the key you're playing it. Very simple. And God will be blessed and glorified even if everybody else isn't. Thank you for watching today. It's John Ruffle in Birmingham, England. God bless you. Enjoy worship of Jesus.